let's look at agribusiness. Uh, this is an industry with the longest history of all the markets. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. We can find agribusiness right here under consumer staples. We are going to look at Moo agribusiness distance from 52 week lows, 52 week highs, and here are some other ETFs in the consumer staples space. Okay, let's now first we will jump into the uh, charts then we will look at a bit of seasonality when it is strong and weak and so on and then a bit of fundamentals then we will have a segment about uh, commodity commodities which is very important and then we will look at the S&P 500 okay the ticker is MOO Vanek Vectors Agribusiness ETF and this obviously gives you exposure to the agricultural industry which is the oldest of all the stock market in the industries meaning it is real very real indeed weekly data points going all the way back here to 2007 the reason why this ETF is interesting is because we after this pullback we came into this zone where you can see we have been many 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 times in the past okay we are testing this key level, huge support here. And uh, it recently has started uh, to bounce uh, you know, more significantly, so it's, it's becoming interesting. The statistical correlation with the S&P 500 is at 74% positive, meaning they do, they do kind of move together. Uh, if you look at um, you know, the RSI during this plunge, the RSI reached, uh, let's say the bottom of the RSI was 1475 here, this was, um, what was the bottom, yeah, 17-ish, yeah, so the RSI reached the lowest level ever for this ETF. We've had a rather impressive breakout recently, you know, quite, quite a bullish sign. We are heading towards a level that could certainly become res resistance, and then that is the purple 20 week moving average. If we look at the accumulation distribution line, uh, which is rather interesting given that we've had this long term shuffling sideways, you can see that um, the, the AD line is at a higher level than it was back then, which, was, which w basically were the same uh, price levels. That's interesting. Let's look at the daily data points, zoom out a bit to load the moving averages. Okay, um, you can see that the RSI is corroborating the rally, that is uh, good. The accumulation distribution line, it is a bit weak so far, you can see that during this rally, we would preferably want to see the AD line move up upwards with the price. Uh, we are not seeing that, hence um, there's not really been that pickup in buyers yet. So the RSI is showing some bullish uh, corroboration of the price level, but then you, there is some bearishness here with the AD line. Here we have the 100 day moving average in blue as the resistance uh, level. But the price action today shows a pretty clear breakout. So um, some nice uh, bullish action going on here with uh, agribusiness. And um, yeah, very interesting. Uh, the thing is that um, the agricultural industry, if you look at the DBA, that's the agriculture fund, uh, weekly data points, that's, it's been in this massive decline for quite some time. Hence, if there, if we were to see some turnaround, um, that could be very beneficial for agribusiness. Given that there will be a push now towards making more things uh, locally, that would be bullish for agribusiness you know, due to the whole virus situation. And since there are multiple factors, on top of it you have the whole uh, thing about getting people back to work and agri agriculture is one of those businesses that, you know, where you can get people, you know, relatively quickly train people. Um, so it is an interesting business. So let's look a bit at the seasonality here. We are currently in May, this is June. This is between 2007 and 2011. This was a rough time for the markets though. You can see that June was the weakest month actually, however July was one of the strongest months. 
So that's something to think about. Let's jump now to after 2011, like that. Here again, you can see that June is a weak month. However, July, from July to August, that's when you see this. It's the later part of the year where especially you see this upward trend. That's interesting. Let's now jump to 2016 to 2018. 2020, I mean, 2020. Uh, in this period, you can see that July, again, you can see that July, it was a bit repeating here, that July, it tends to be a strong uh, month for Mu, meaning, because this shows you, shows you the percentage of months in which Mu closed higher than it opened, okay? So that's interesting. I mean, we are, of course, seeing some rally here in the price, and um, there could, of course, be some shift in seasonality. But July and the later part of the year certainly seems to be uh, promising months for the Mu ETF. Okay, uh, let's uh, get into a bit of the fundamentals. Here with Finvis, they draw these trend lines, and you can see, can see that we do have a bullish breakout above the uh, trend lines. That's, that's, that corroborates the bull case. Dividend is 1.63%, so you're not really that impressive, but at least you are paid a dividend. Here is some of the recent performance. Um, still deep in the red year to date. But that could be that you could turn that into a bullish case for Mu in the sense that you have you've seen that technology companies and biotech they have soared a lot, meaning there could also be this rotation, uh, and money will then rotate into industries that are the laggards. Which could potentially be be uh, bullish for a move. Here is ETF.com. Uh, Here is the expense ratio. Um, assets under management: 528 million US dollars. Uh, nothing big. Average daily dollar volume. Uh, not a very liquid ETF. Hence, this is more suitable for swing trading and long term. Here is the price to earnings ratio. You see that the PE is uh, 21. Let's actually just get the S&P 500 so we can do a com direct comparison because that's SPI, it's like the benchmark. Okay, so let's load that data. Okay, so the PE for the, yeah, it's around 18. So the PE here for this agribusiness is certainly higher. But of course, you need to be aware that the PE varies between industries. The price book ratio, a lower is better. Um, you can see that the price book is, is better here for Moo, agribusiness, so it becomes a bit uh, about what you think is the best indicator really, is it the PE or the price book. A number of holdings, 53. Uh, can we get some more detail? No, we actually cannot get that much detail. Maybe we have to go to an activator's website, like this, to sort of uh, do, an, do some autopsy here of the ETF. Okay, okay, let's see. Maybe I get more data if I say institutional. I I'm not sure. Blah blah blah, I agree. Um, holdings. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, portfolio analytics. Okay, so here you can see some of the companies Suatis, Tyson Foods, Deer. Uh, you got Movie, that's the salmon company we have looked at previously. Some agriculture, you know, uh, companies as well. I mean, I mean, uh, soil potash companies as well here. Uh, mosaic, um, Baca Frost, fish. That's the fish business. Salmar also in the fish business. Also fish business. I mean, there's a lot of food here, basically, food and soil and yeah. So these are these are industries that's been around um, us f throughout all of human history. One of the big complaints about finance is that a lot of companies are, you know, they are in these industries that will come and go, but commodity, you know, agriculture, it's been around forever. It really has, and there's something profound about investing in something that is so deeply real. Especially in our times where everything is like socially constructed and make-believe. Okay. So let's talk a bit about commodity commodities. I also like to call this space natural resources. Uh, so, so these products, yes, they have a very long history. And there are big differences in how various commodities re react to global recessions and you know, bull markets. They are you know, a separate kind of animal. There are many different types of commodities though. 
green energy, solar, wind, ethanol, and uranium, fossil energy, coal, crude oil, gasoline, heating oil, and natural gas. You got the precious metals, gold, silver, silver, platinum, and palladium. And then you have the base metals, like lithium, copper, aluminum, lead, steel, iron ore. And here we get into more like the pure agricultural space, and that's the grains. You got rice, oats, corn, wheat, soybeans, canola, meat, you got the hogs, you got cattle. Then you got what, what is called softs, that's stuff like lumber, orange juice, sugar, coffee, cocoa, cotton, and fresh water. So here they say a bit more about uh, what they have in the ETF. So agri agrochemicals, animal health and fertilizers, seeds and traits, uh, farm irrigation equipment and farm machinery, aquaculture and fishing, livestock, cultivation and plantation, and the trading of agricultural products. Yes. Uh, let's now look at the S&P 500. The S, well, let's look at the, the futures because they give us more data. Okay, uh, daily data points. Uh, today is another uh, very bullish day on the market for sure. We are, for the first time after the crash, we are testing the underbelly here of the red 200 day moving average. Uh, the 200 day moving average, it is usually like the key level determinant of whether we are in a bull or a bear market. If we do manage to somehow break above it, that would quite clearly be a very bullish uh, sign. And then breaking out to new highs could actually become a, reali a reality. Then again, as I said, it would be an absurdity though to have the longest bull market be followed by the shortest bear. That is absurd, um, but it could happen. Uh, the reason is that the central banks have just gone ballistic. They are being extremely accommodative. Um, a lot of money is pouring into the markets. And the big problem with that, and how that can become bearish, is because that's a performance enhancing drug. You can only do that, do that, do that so far. And the issue, right, is that when the market recovers, you know, if it recovers, then the central banks need to pull back. Um, because you're not, su you're not supposed to, you know, support someone who don't supposedly need support, right? And that in turn could be, um, be uh, adding some selling pressures. Hence, it's a, the the central banks are just in a completely messy situation. They do want to support the market to make it go up, but then again, if the economy is supposedly is recovering, then why are the central banks supporting it? That's some um, that's a very inconsistent uh, message. But anyway, bears are very uh, much getting a beating. Uh, bulls are very aggressive, and uh, we want to let the trend be our friend. So even though. I am a normative bear, as I've said. This right here is not the time to be uh, bearish in, pr in actual practice. If you do get some clear rejection of the red 200 day moving average, then it could become more interesting to look at short uh, selling opportunities. Whatever you do, of course, in these wild and crazy times, you want to let the trend be your friend, you want to be very diversified, and um, yeah. Have a look at the agribusiness, because we did see some interesting uh, stuff uh, there. <laughs> 